Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. Chirothin Plug and Play Chiropractic Only Weight Loss Program is adding hundreds of thousands of dollars and nearly unlimited supply of new chiropractic patients to offices all over North America. Yes, it's even approved by Health Canada. You don't have to change your philosophy, learn a new technique, or spend money traveling to seminars. Just take their system, implement it, and experience exactly what you've been looking for, increased cash revenue, and more chiropractic patients. For more information or to test Chirothin in your office, go to Chirothin.com and click on the pricing tab. Okay. All right, TCP listeners, I have an incredible guest today, and that is actually Dr. Barbara Eaton. Dr. Barbara, how are you doing today? I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm great. This is the second time we get to talk, I think, this week, isn't it? So this, yeah. is, this is fun. And, but I here's the thing that. is, I, well, I get to learn, out, <clears throat> like, learn more about you this time. So, okay. <laughs> so here we go. So why don't you share with listeners a little bit about you, you know, personally, professionally, and uh, how you're actually becoming one of the thought leaders in our profession today. Um, about me, I love to have fun. And I was just actually talking with Garrett Gunderson and he asked me the same thing, like, what do you really love? And just like when I was in practice, the thing I love, I love making people feel good about themselves of seeing that they have value and they have importance and, and that um, their thoughts, their feelings, their dreams and ideas and goals are, are really, um, they matter. And if they're not achieving them, they can be achieved regardless of what's happened to them in the past. The future is what they choose to make of it. So um, I get to do that through my boot camp and with private coaching and being on the road like you are. And it's just an incredible life. I'm incredibly blessed. And so, I mean, how long, how long has it been that, you know, you've gone from the transition of, you know, your, your practice to now where you're coaching to, to now with the boot camp as well? What's the timeline on that? Yeah. So, um, I hired my coach five months before I ever opened my practice way back in, um, the summer of 1998. I opened in December of 98 in Michigan, which you can appreciate probably not a great time of year to open a business, but we did it anyway. And um, by God's grace, had done the work, right? Instead of waiting for the struggle and not knowing how to open, operate a business, I decided if I'm going to have to figure that out anyway, maybe I should just do it before making a bunch of mistakes and costing myself a bunch of money. Um, so I went zero to 180 in 89 days. Um, and then my coach at the time asked me if I would teach other chiropractors, like coach them. And I was like, uh, sure, I don't really know what, but. I'm in, like whatever it is, if I can help other people, I will. So my first um, teleclass series started in 1999. It was called Zero to 180 in 90 Days or Less. It taught endless referrals, raving fans, which was testimonials, um, making sure you get paid your worth, and then um, marketing and communication. And so I did that while I still practiced. Um, while I was practicing, I decided I wanted to homeschool my kids just because I had like three minutes of time in my day that I can squeeze one more thing in. Not really. Um, and so that was tons of fun. I, I really love um, being of service to my family and, and to my community. And so being able to homeschool opened up all kinds of new channels. And I loved that. Um, and then I started coaching, pri like doing private coaching with doctors in 2001. And then um, I've been doing that full time. So, I, so I've been coaching chiropractors 19 years. Wow. And then the boot camp kicked off in April of 2017. And, you know, I hope that the boot camp is a great um, model and example to anyone listening that it doesn't matter how long you've done something or where you're at, you can make it happen, but you got to go fast and break things. Um, like I said to a client today, she's like, I'm just like, so, oh, I don't know what to do. And I said, that's exactly the right place to be then. Yeah. Like, if you don't know, if you know what you're doing all the time, you're in the wrong place. You already got that game beat. 
So now step up to bigger games. So that's like kind of, I guess, one of my rules is if, if, you know, if I'm in this like routine and it's total comfort, you know, comfortable, I'm, I, I, I gotta, I gotta switch it up and step it up. Yeah. You need the chaos. I love chaos. <laughs> there, that's, there, you know what, honestly, there's nothing but good stuff comes from, from the chaos, especially yeah. when it comes to business. I find, um, you got to dig deep when there's chaos. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, chaos is energy. Yes. Right. And chaos is, and in chaos is when we really find what our strengths are. I think, cause like what happens to you in that moment? What happens to you within that sympathetic rush? Like, do you freak out? Who are the people you go to? What are the things that you say to yourself? Like, what are those conversations? The Facebook live I did the other day was like, you know, when you wake up on Monday morning, you've got that panic because you weren't at the office that weekend or, you know, at home, instead of focusing on your family, you weren't wasting time while trying to be with them. Like, what is your go-to? And my go-to now is awesome. How can I provide value? Like we are going to provide more value in order to serve individuals on a higher level. And yeah, I'm going to say it, make more money. I love making money. It's a blast. <laughs> money is, money is just a byproduct of value. Yes. So, I, I mean, I learned that early on and, um, yeah, I've, I've had the, you know, I've had the crazy experience too, of just being able to really find and do what I love. And I think those are the two big, I think we had this kind of discussion earlier on your, <laughs> when you interview is like, do what you love, right? So figure out what you want to do and your purpose and do what you love. And then crazy thing, the bank account actually takes care of itself. So. I love that. It's how you keep score of how much value you're providing. Yeah. I mean, really, that's, that's it. And then the more value you provide and the more income you have, then I find that you can provide more value. I can provide a lot more value because I have more money than when I was broke. <laughs> I got to tell you a quick story. So I got to make this podcast all about me. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what? I had a sweatshirt that said, um, enough about me. Tell me about you. What do you think about me? <laughs> Turn the, turn the tables on the philanthropist. Okay. So one of my early mentors, uh, Jesse Elder. So I don't know if you know of Jesse, but so he, he was one of the people who actually helped Garrett J. White, um, Marcy Locke, all these other people who were really early in the online entrepreneurial game. And so I, I coached with him one-on-one -on -one for several months. And I remember one thing he said, he said, he asked me, he goes, where does, where does money come from? And I said, I don't know, I don't know like, people print money, you know, it comes from the bank, whatever. He goes, he goes, it's other people's bank accounts. So money comes from other people's bank accounts. So all you need to do, Ed, is figure out how can you provide so much value that people feel that the money sitting in their bank account is actually more valuable in your bank account, right? Because of all the value that you provide. He's like, that's, that was the secret to the game. <laughs> that's awesome i love that but what it's true is, in practice too yeah oh yeah and without it that bank account just their bank account will dwindle because they'll either be losing their health or losing their wealth or something over here so really we're providing a huge service whereby instead of losing it it's going to magnify yeah and grow. i mean it, yeah it just it's more valuable to that person in your bank account versus in theirs it's just it's, it's a mindset thing. Well, anyways, when I figured that out and, and I think that, you know, it, again, this is equally valuable, I think, to people like doctors who are listening that are in practice. Like, how can you make, which we already know that we have, or maybe communicate, but we already know we have the most valuable product on the planet, but how can you make what we do inside of the office, like, so valuable that people just like, hey, man, I got to just simply pay you exactly what you're asking for those services. Um, so yeah, there's my little story for the day. Uh, okay, so <laughs> let's head into um, quote or affirmation. I would love to hear uh, some words of positivity that we can drop on doctors. All right, so here it is. We're in this game called life and we're in it to win it together. Nice. And in your mind, you have to see like a double bicep pump on that one. <laughs> Not like just kumbaya singing, but I mean like we're in a huddle and this is the last play of the game. And it's all on the line right now. It's ours to lose. Like, we got this. And let's hit it hard. Do you, do you find that a lot of doctors you speak to, 
try to work in isolation like they do it try to do it alone yeah and you know i think i think there are lots of reasons i think number one we don't really want someone to see behind like behind the surface of what are we really afraid of and um you know i it's funny, in, in, well, you know this, in chiropractic, instead of a name tag, it has like your volume, as if that means anything, right? Because it means nothing, because um, you can serve yourself broke, and you can have that empty bank account, and have every table in your practice full, right? Yep. Um, so I think that a lot of times we keep up, the, like keep people at bay, because we don't want them to know the truth. Yep. I also actually was talking to a doctor this morning, it was really interesting, she's been involved in a coaching program for 15 years, and has done very well and was like one of the top female practitioners in that program. And she said, you know, what was awful though, is like, if I ever said to somebody like, man, I'm, I'm kind of struggling. She's like, it would be like me being the girl at, you know, Weight Watchers and I'm complaining about the last two pounds I can't take off. She's like, but the struggle was still real to me. Maybe I don't have to go, you know, like this, you know, like a huge amount of distance to, to, you know, like get to the next level. Like my, my next level may be way bigger than everybody else's, but I'm still struggling to get there. Mm -hmm. So I think especially for women too, there hasn't been much of a dialogue about being successful. You know, we're all just supposed to be vanilla and be the same and don't make anyone feel bad. And, you know, something that we talk about in the boot camp that the greatest threat to living your optimal potential is a low demand environment. If you're around, everybody else is just telling you, Oh, take it easy. And it's okay, honey. Like, I'm not going to cuss, but you're that. <laughs> like, no, it's not okay. If, yeah. you're not, if you're not pushing it, the envelope every day and uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but you're leaving some on the table and that's not acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I totally get that. I mean, it's like right now, well, today I'm supposed to be on a plane to Boise, Idaho, to be in a room with 40 or 50 other entrepreneurs as part of Inner Circle. And I, I'm like, no, I got to stay. I just, I couldn't get get on the plane. So, um, but the reason why I go to those and the reason why I put myself in that room is because the people who are around me elevate me um, because they're, they're at a different level. Uh, so that, um, that sense of uncomfortable uh, is, is really what pushes me to go to the next level. And I think that doctors need to, that's why I was kind of getting at the isolation. I think we need to be around others who push us and pull us up. Does it push us or lift us up? To the next level um so yeah that's awesome thank you very much for that's that's great advice i, I want to know like a little bit about like i don't know uh, any of any of the resistance or struggle that dr barbara has ever experienced so i i always like to to connect with doctors on a certain level and let them know like look we all have challenges we all have resistance we all have struggles so could you share with doctors a time that either personally professionally whatever you're comfortable with sharing you know, a time that you really just ate the crap sandwich and it was like, man, this sucks, but you learned something. There was a gift in that and then you extracted that and it's, it's applied to maybe how your business or life today. Um, I think overarching is feeling like I can power my way through, which like, that's a great thing to have, especially when I learned to ride Harley. Um, you know, I, I had a blast just like, you know, throttle down and heading out. And my poor husband was like trying to keep me from, you know, like when your kid starts learning how to walk and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that's how he was with me on my bike. Cause I had way too powerful of a bike. And I, I feel like in my life I can always power through, like always, like always figure it out, always make it up. And sometimes that causes some pretty big bumps. Um, and, and I think like, the, where that's hurt me the most is in um, like choosing choosing the wrong guy to begin my life with. I mean, I have great kids, um, but you know, I knew in my gut. Like, I remember like literally getting ready to walk down the aisle, going, "Well, I'll figure this one out when it's not, you know, like when it's ready to be done." You know, and my dad was like, "Are you ready for this? Are you sure?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's all good. Like, I'll figure it out." And just the, the, the hurt that it caused my children, um, you know, brings me pain now. And to see, to see that, that's like the, that's the hardest thing in my life is to know that I made a decision that has hurt my children. Um, and that, you know, like 
our decisions, we don't live on an island. And so that's like, just like the chiropractor that's being isolated. You don't live on an island. You know, if, if you're being an isolationist, you're probably passing that on to your kids. You're passing that on to your practice members. And we're all in this together. Like you have as much to receive as you have to give. Um, and, and so I think it's, it's learning, you know, sometimes the strength overused becomes our weakness. Um, and so the fact that I can typically figure things out has definitely become a weakness. And I think um, professionally, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't, I'm not really so much of a team player in terms of like getting stuff done. Like tell me like a committee, I suck. Don't put me on a committee. <laughs> like I'm good at a committee of one when that needs to be done. I just want to like, you know, I, I guess I put on my testosterone and I just fix it and get it on and let's go. And um, I don't find that that's always met with great applause. So, so, um, so it's, it's learning, you know, it's, it's learning that. And, um, I mean, thankfully I have a lot of really great mentors, um, who remind me that, you know, that the number of arrows in your back is, is pretty much a direct relationship with the impact you're making. So all I got to say, if you got an arrow, bring it on. Bring it on! <laughs> I, I know every time I get I get a little bit of resistance or hate or whatever it is thrown my way, um, which you know happens. We we all it all happens when you put yourself out there. Uh, I always go back to the um, Happy Gilmore. Uh, I don't know Happy Gilmore movie where he was actually getting ready for hockey season or something that like he was like in a softball um, pitching <laughs> Ted and he's actually taking the balls in the chest. That's yeah. what I feel like some days, Barbara. <laughs> Yeah, 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 right. And you're just like, fast, is that all you got? Right. Come on, bring it on. So, yeah. but I love that because, you know, like someone like yourself, that's, that's completely like, look, I mean, there's, 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 I like how this, this conversation is going because it's like, look, there's like some people would love to have that kind of confidence, right? That be able to, to be the lion, but you know, there's, or lioness. And, but the, but there's also that aspect of like, hey, sometimes that can actually be harmful. Like, you know, and, and we talk about isolation. I wrote down here, you know, like if you're suffering, if a doc is listening and they're suffering in practice, they're probably taking that home. Like that suffering somehow is going home with them. So Not probably it is. Like, it is. Okay. Hello. So I'll say it is. It is. It absolutely yeah. is. So yeah, this is, thank you for that. And thank you for being real. I mean, that's one of the things that we, we want to do on this show is really just get real. Um, and also just, you know, we have doctors realize we have that saying that, you know, we are more alike than we are different. Okay. So I want to talk about the boot camp. So tell me a little bit about the boot camp. Tell me about how this, um, how this has really changed since April of 2017 and changed what you, you're doing in helping docs. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. Like, I don't want to compare the boot camp to being a mom, you know, like when, when Samson was born and you just like didn't have words for it, but it's a pretty incredible experience. And I truly believe like, it's not mine. It's ours. I even said that on a, so on Wednesdays at 1 PM Eastern, we do a live group coaching call and everyone come, you know, calls in on, on zoom or, or joins via, via video. And they're like my sisters, you know, and, and we're working on things together. And like today we talked about bringing in sensory Santa for, um, you know, special needs families in your community that those kids can't go to the mall or to Cabela's or whatever and see Santa. Like that's going to send them right up into the rafters with all those trophies up there. And that's not pretty at all for anybody. Um, and so just like working through it together and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful for the message that the boot camp has brought to our profession of women of you can have it all. Like literally you can have it all. You can be a, like a phenomenal mother and a phenomenal um, uh, wife and an entrepreneur and a leader in your community. Is it going to look like somebody who's doing, you know, full-time mother or full-time practice or whatever? It, it's not going to look the same, but it doesn't mean your results aren't going to be the same or better. Yeah. So yeah. we got to keep focused on what do you really want to accomplish? And so, you know, in the boot camp, I also have the pleasure of, um, you know, like at, 
as I developed it, I'm like, I'm not an expert in most things. Um, I'm really good at connecting people. And so that's why I have like Dr. Matthew Loop. Um, you know, obviously he's a friend of both of ours and that dude is like social media strategist extraordinaire. So that's who teaches the boot campers about social media. Um, you know, David Fletcher brings technology and certainty together. Roberto Monaco teaches public speaking and influence. I mean, in, in every single one of them, the moment I asked them, hey, will you be a, a, a coach and contribute a week of content? It was immediately yes. And I'm just like, yeah, that's my tribe. Like, <laughs> thanks for helping them. Um, and it's exciting to see these women. And there are men, obviously in the boot camp, my focus is women. But dudes see that these women are doubling and tripling their practices over and over and over and over and over again. And like, I want to do that. So they come in. Um, but my focus is, is women. And um, it's just, it's exciting. It's to see, it's so exciting to see how much their personal lives and their professional lives are training. Like Dr. Robin said, you know, I'm more excited about my life than I've ever been. She has already prepaid for this fabulous um, Hawaiian vacation. She's a single mom for she and her sons, um, for Christmas. Like, that's awesome. It just, yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Or women, you know, they're, they're women in the boot camp that their husbands supported them throughout, um, Cairo school and their first years of practice. And they're like, I want to give him the opportunity to do something that he loves. So I have to make up that income difference and they're doing it so that now there's, you know, like they're filling that gap. So their husband then can go and be fulfilled and maybe become a man of iron. <laughs> there you go. Do you do you feel that um, some chiropractors are afraid to ask for a, pr a proper exchange for like the value of the service that we provide? Is that a common common thing? Well, not for very long after you get into the boot camp because I'm always on everybody to double your fees again and again and again and again. That's and where again. I'm kind of going with this, but yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, don't double your fees if you're not willing to add quadruple the value. Right. Like, don't just double them and then give the same service or provide the same the same value for them just because you've been in practice. It's like paying an employee. Just because they're there for 10 years doesn't mean they get a pay raise. Like they have to be contributing more value. If you're there for 10 years and you're providing the same value you did a year ago, I should be actually taking money away from you because you haven't advanced the business, right? Yeah. Um, so the same thing, like double your fees, but quadruple your value. Um, Mike McCallowitz and I did a Facebook live about that. And I think that he did a really awesome job in, in laying out the foundation of, of how to do that. Um, and no one, you know, like the marketplace is going to define you if you don't define yourself. Roberto Monaco talks a lot about that. Like they're going to create the story about you if you don't create it yourself. Same thing with value. If you don't set your value, they'll set it for you. And you'll see them in coming in and, and dickering, you know, Monty Hall, let's make a deal. Um, that's not how I would recommend doing a practice is own your value and demand to be paid for the services and then over deliver on the service. Beautiful. And so, okay. So for the docs that are listening, how do, how can they actually connect, learn more about the bootcamp? Yep. 56 day Cairo bootcamp.com backslash apply. 56, hold on. You're going to have to say it again. Okay, 56-day Cairo Bootcamp .com backslash apply. And let me tell you something. That has been revolutionary in my business. So I encourage all of you, have, have the starting point for all of the relationships. Like, what happens? Like, when I meet somebody, that's where it goes. Like, and what that's going to do is it's going to take you through a funnel. Thank you, Russell. Um, and we're going to get on the phone together. Like you cannot get into the boot camp. Like that's my group. That's my, those are my people, old man. Um, without talking to me, yeah. there isn't a, a click and join. There's none of that. Um, no, I don't have a lower price point offering. And I've talked about that. I don't have one yet. Um, <laughs> like it's the boot camp, baby. Like, or private. And I do private coaching as well. My private coaching is full right now, but I also do private coaching. Yeah, but I, I have mean, a team of, of coaches that I have trained in the boot camp if you're looking for private coaching. To do private coaching. And that's yeah. how it's done, folks. Um, <laughs> so, but I mean, that's, that's true. It's like, I mean, even, even to, to work with me, um, like I used to have a sales team and things like that. And then I actually, now it's like, I've gone back to it's just, no, you got to talk to me. 
people are sometimes actually a little surprised because they'll learn about like maybe they hear about it me on a webinar they apply i get on a call with them for 15 minutes and they're like oh wait it, you're actually dr ed and i'm like yeah no like it's, it, i mean we like like it comes down to one thing and that's results and like the worst thing and i think maybe you agree with this is not the worst but i would never want someone to 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 join uh, or become part of our crew that just isn't a fit. I mean, um, and that that's why we see results, and I'm sure that's why you see results, is we qualify whether people are going to be a great, great fit or not. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to put you into the TCP time machine. We call this part Back to the Future. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, so here we go. So um, I'm going to send you back in the TCP time machine. This is when you came out of chiropractic college. So we're going to take who you are today. We're going to send you back in the time machine to a younger version of yourself. You just stepped out of chiropractic college. You have all the life experience and the knowledge that you have today. What would you say to that younger self? Um, choose your spouse wisely would be number one. Okay. Number two would be um, don't sell your practice. That's my opinion. Like figure out a way. I mean, I had some kind of extenuating circumstances and then moved out of state. Um, but hold on to your practice. Figure out instead how you can have someone come in and, 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 and take over. I'm not saying hold the note. I didn't say that. No way ever did I say that. Um, but I'm saying, you know, maintain control, but provide like, you know, I, it, like GC says, success is our duty, our responsibility and our obligation. And, and I believe as chiropractors, like some of us are really great in business. Some of us are really great clinically. I'm really great business that like clinically is not, that's not my strong suit. So if I step out of that and allow somebody else to come in, who's great clinically, and I can still run the practice and therefore we're still impacting our communities on bigger and bigger levels. I feel like that's the best thing that we can do for humanity. Um, so I, I would say that I would also um, like go fast and break things. And, yeah. and, and I didn't do it alone. If you're doing it alone, I'm telling you, you're only addicted to the struggle. And all it is, is your comfort zone. Even though it's uncomfortable, it has become your habit. It has become your, com your comfort zone. And you don't have to be there. Like there are lots of hands out, not handouts, um, but there are lots of hands out who are willing to help you. And I encourage you, don't look to make a lateral move. Always look to make a, you know, a vertical move instead of people who are just doing what you're doing. Like, no offense, but that's kind of boring. Like level up. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, that's, I, I always talk about the, like the, the purpose of life is growth and expansion, right? It's to learn new things, to push yourself. Otherwise it becomes boring. And that's when I get on the calls with docs and they feel like they lost the sense of who they are and purpose. So yeah. Awesome. Very good advice. I love this. Okay. So Last thing before we kind of wrap up is just simply your best resource. So what, would, what is it that you would say, look, every doctor needs to either read this or listen to this uh, or any sort of resource you would say? So I'd first, I, can I first do like an overarching thing? And that is if you're not talking to somebody or you don't have to listen to them, like forget the music, have something empowering running. Yeah. Right. Whether it's audible or like in the boot camp, there are over 200, um, you know, trainings or, you know, listen to Dr. Ed's podcast, but train yourself to always be like feeding your mind. Even if it's in the background, be feeding your mind. So right now my jam is a mixture of three. I hope that's okay. Sure. Um, that would be our friend, Russell Brunson, expert secrets. Love this book. Um, <laughs> One to Many, Jason Flavlin, another awesome book. And this one sucks to read it, but it's great to listen. Tim Grover's Relentless. Um, oh, one last one. Clockwork by Mike Michalowicz. That one I've never heard of. Have you heard of Mike Michalowicz? No. no. Oh, he, so he's um, Profit First, Surge, The Pumpkin Plan, Toilet Paper Entrepreneur, and so his mission is to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. Wow. 
That's he's cool. cool dude. I've done a couple of Facebook lives with him. I really like Mike. Like he's just a really um, down to earth, practical stuff. He's really funny, or at least why he thinks he's really funny. So of course you think that person's funny. Um, kind of like Garrett doing stand up comedy now. Did you know he's doing that? Garrett yeah. Gunderson or Garrett? <laughs> yeah. Garrett Gunderson is doing stand up comedy. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I think that's so funny. Uh, I'd like to see that. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? Um, so at any rate, and and also so one last thing, whatever you have to do, grow your relationship capital. Yes. And that won't be being an island. Yeah. Grow your relationship capital. Like my capital has gone up huge because I'm like pals with you now. Thanks. <laughs> It's true. I mean, I've built a massive network just having these conversations with people that, you know, every doctor can have conversations with the people that are in their practice or the people in their community. So it's a network, what's that saying? Network, net worth, something like that. Yeah, your network is your net worth. <laughs> something. Yeah. And it's a political say. year. So reach out to your politicians. Like I worked in the, um, in the Capitol was at Michigan State University because it's in Lansing where the Capitol is. And so I worked in one of the representatives office and my whole job was to care for our constituents. Like mm -hmm. we wanted them to call in and then I was like, you know, responsible to put them in touch with the right people. So listen, chiropractors, reach out to your local state and federal politicians. They, they want to serve you because of course they want your vote. So use it. Hello. And the stuff that you're doing, like I used to do an elite dinner party twice a year. Um, and I always wanted to show off my practice. Like I want to show off the boot camp. It's killer. And I wanted to show off my practice because it was the same thing. And so anything I was doing in my practice, all of my state, local, and federal politicians got an invitation. Wow. Good advice. I know. the worst thing you could say? No. Okay. Yeah, or they show up. Yeah. And most of the times they, they showed up. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Okay. So listeners, you can head over to the chiropractic philanthropist.com and we will have a webpage dedicated to our discussion with Dr. Barbara Eaton. We're going to have links to all of the resources, the books, um, also to the boot camp, so that you can apply should you wish uh, and have a conversation with Dr. Eaton. Um, and if you are listening on your mobile, like 60% of you, I know you are, just go ahead and actually open up those show notes and you'll see all the clickable links and you can apply right from your phone right now. All right, Dr. Barbara brought the fire today. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Yeah, I want to appreciate you so much for, um, you know, just again, like giving back. This is, I feel like you've done us a favor by being on the show today. So I just want to acknowledge you for everything that you do for our profession, but for also being coming on the show and, and sharing today. Thank you. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the Chiropractic Philanthropist.